Okay, good evening, and thank you for coming again tonight. Uh, the last of our guests that were at the other venue that we originally had, which uh, we changed because of uh, access for the mobility challenge. Uh, we have a lot of guests here who really wanted to be here, and they made their way out of their houses and made their way down to Glendale on this night. That we're expecting some rain later on, so I'm really happy that it hasn't started yet, and it looks like we've got a full house. Uh, my name is Ara Manuja, and tonight we're going to be discussing, and by the way, this is my mother, Silva Natali Manuja. <laughs> and we're going to be discussing this book, which is called Betrayal, The Promise Never Kept. Um, before we do this, Tristan, can you turn the, the main volume down just a little bit? We're getting feedback, just a little bit, on the right-hand side. One, two, one, two, take it down a little. Take it more, more, okay, that's, that's probably better, good. Okay, so as I said, we're going to be presenting this book, Betrayal, The Promise Never Kept, Genocide and the West's Secret War for Oil. This is not a book about the Armenian Genocide, just so you know, even though it's Shahan Natali's work, and he is known, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna start by talking a little bit about Shahan Natali before I get into this book. That's probably the place to start because there are gonna be people that are gonna go, who is Shahan Natali? So, as, as we know, uh, there was an Armenian genocide that started actually in 1894, 1895, and went all the way to 1923 for that period of time. And there was genocides that were very intense in the beginning and at the very middle, kind of, and then it went on until 1923. Uh, Shahan Natali was born in the village of Husenik uh, in the Kharpev region, which is found in today, uh, it's not actually in, as we call, Wilsonian Armenian, which was the Armenia that was given to us, or it was, uh, it was decided that we would have. It's a little bit further out of Wilsonian Armenian, more to the west. Uh, and Shahan Natali, he was actually a victim of the Hamidian massacres. And the Hamidian massacres were named after the Sultan, Sultan Hamid V. And he was known as the Bloody Sultan because of these massacres. It took the lives of about 300,000 people and 300,000 Armenians. And of course, there's always collateral damage that you know, others get killed along the way. But primarily, the Armenians were the target. And Shahan, at the age of 11, lost his father and relatives of his during the massacres. And his life was spared because there was a neighbor boy who was older than him and worked for a Turk on a plantation, had grabbed him by the hand and, and taken him away. And the plan had originally been, Shahan's father was a tax collector, and he had known that this was going to be happening. In fact, a day before this happened, there was an attempt to uh, take the village, but the, the villagers were able to fight the Kurds back, and it was, it was done by the Kurds, but it was actually backed by the Turks and the Sultan or the government. And not necessarily, I can't say it was even the Sultan, but there was a lot of things going on. It's in the book um, of other powers that were at work at that time. And it had to do with even the young Turks who were, as we know in, in our history for the 1915 genocide of the Armenian people, they were the ones that were primarily behind or they were the, the tool that was used to carry out the Armenian genocide. So Shahan was supposed to, his father said, the Kurds will come, and we've seen this before, because the way that it used to work in, the, in those days, where the Kurds would come every once in a while, and the Armenians would accumulate their wealth, the Kurds would come, they would pillage the village, or whichever villages or towns or where, what have you, and they, would, they wouldn't kill people, they would just take what they wanted, and then they would leave, and the Armenians would come back and rebuild their lives. It was kind of like harvesting the crop. That was what the Armenians were for the Kurds. They were the crop. But this time, rather than just harvesting the crop, they uprooted the roots of this crop so it would never grow again. And they weren't expecting this. They were actually, as, as Shahan's father told him, they will come, we'll leave the front door unlocked so they won't break the front door. Your mother, we've hidden flour, and your mother will come back after you. All, all the children, it was four sisters and Shahan, and the mother and the father, and a grandfather who was over 100 years old, from what I'm told, like 103 years old. 
So the, they were all supposed to just walk up to the cemetery, watch the pillage, later on come back, the mother would bake the bread, and they would have their meal and rebuild their lives. And they would have a, a front door they could lock at night because they, would left, they left it open. Well, unfortunately, that's not what happened. But fortunately for Shahan, the neighbor boy who was 14, 15 years old, who Shahan's father was taking care of that family because the father of that household was in America working. So Shahan was snatched away and taken onto a plantation, a Turks plantation, where there were many Armenians hiding. And later on, three days later, he came out to find his mother mourning over the, the body, the corpse of his father, who had been beheaded. And so Shahan and his mother had to drag the corpse to the cemetery and with his, Shahan with his hands, he himself had to dig the grave of his father. And as he, as he stood over the grave, once he was done, his mother made him take an oath to venge the death of his father and those that carried it out so it wouldn't happen to anyone ever again. And that's what Shahan Natali was known for. He was known for his revolutionary activity, and when the Armenian Genocide did, did take place in 1915, the, that round, Shahan was actually in America, and he was making his way back. It was right at the time when the Greeks and the Turks were at war. Well, Shahan made it to Greece, and he was turned back as a national from Turkey, as an enemy of the state. So he never actually was on the ground in Armenia when that happened. So that's the story of Shahan Natali. The book, there's one, one episode which everybody always wants to know. The one thing that Shahan Natali is most famous for is organizing the operation called Operation Nemesis. And Operation Nemesis is the, um, the, the organization and the assassinations of those Turkish leaders and other world leaders who were responsible for the Armenian Genocide. And the most famous, of course, is Talat Pasha, who was the Grand Vizier of, and the, the, the Prime Minister and the Minister of the Interior. He held a lot of posts at that time, simultaneously, no less, um, by assassinating people that were in those posts. Of course, nobody knew that. That's in the book also, by the way, uh, these different, these different uh, tasks or these different things that Talat had carried out and the Young Turks had carried out. So betrayal, let me, let me tell you what inspired us to write betrayal. The, the Operation Nemesis story had come out by somebody else. Actually, it came out a few times. And we were holding off because Shahan had given us very specific instructions on when to start publishing his archive. And it was at a point when certain people were no longer around, certain powers were weakened, and so on and so forth. So we, for years, we've been measuring, are we at that point yet? And that was something that he put that task upon us because it wasn't the time for him to actually, his archive to be published yet. And in fact, his archive is now being published little by little. So far we have four volumes done. This is the first one, Betrayal, the Promise Never Kept. And this volume prepares you for Operation Nemesis because just to have Operation Nemesis alone does not give it justice because it's Operation Nemesis, if you were to present it properly, you'd have to present this plus Operation Nemesis, which would be a very thick book. So there was actually somebody that came out with operation, the, the book called Operation Nemesis, which I called Operation Disaster. It's a fictional book, somebody's interpretation of what they think it was and so on. And they had no information. Basically, they had information that were in the press, that people told them, hearsay, this, this that, and the other, and then erroneous conclusions. So we decided, first what we need to do is prepare people for Operation Nemesis, and in order to do that, we wrote Betrayal. So for those of you that don't have the book, the book is available over here, but we're gonna start going through this book right now, chapter by chapter. We're gonna go very quickly because it's an 800-page book, though 400 of the pages, 450 of the pages is the book. The rest is appendix. And the appendix, we intentionally publish documents that just don't exist. These are things we found in Shah Natali's archive, plus things that we had researched over the years in other archives that just aren't like widely known and widely accessible. And I have to tell you that we worked on this book, well now we're going on to 13 years, but the book was completed in 12 years. And along with that 12 years, of course, we completed most of the, the other three chapters that will be coming out over the next couple years. So what we're gonna do is, <clears throat> I am going to open up to the, um, to the, the, the table of contents. And 
I'm just going to go over some of the titles here for you.